What you want here, boy? I want to talk to Isola. You're not here. If you try come in here, I'll fight you. You fight me, I arrest you. You can't arrest me. Me don't do nothing. You think I'm joking, Guma? I put a curse on you. Believe me, I already got a curse on me. Lorraine Porter's son. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. Nothing ratty-tatty about this place. And that's the way it should be up here where the hog is fat. No meat scraps. We're talking T-bone steak here, huh? And man, you're it, huh? The big ace in the car deck. Mm -hmm. I'm sure glad our zodiac signs crossed. It's like my horoscope said. Capricorn baby, consolidate your financial future today. Here I was thinking I was just another little poor black orphan boy going to freeze in the cold white world. Lorraine, is your mother's dead? Gone. Oh, I can't tell you how sorry. I'm truly and deeply sorry. Uh-huh. She was a very special person. A dear friend. Uh-huh. What about your father? Oh, Mom never got married. You know how it is with us colored folks. We ain't much for marrying. What the hell kind of thing is that to say? You don't talk that way about your mother. Of course, not being married didn't make my mother less of a woman. It just made my father less of a man. I don't like you, Mr. Porter. I have tolerated your incredible display of bad manners because your mother and I were friends. Dear friends. Someone I knew very well. No, you lived with her, but you didn't know her. Let's lay it on each other's street. Let's tell it like it was. I don't believe it. Lorraine was a lovely person. Intelligent, cultured. It's just too much of a shock for me to accept you as her son. Well, if that's too much of a shock for you, you're liable to go into a coma when you get behind this. Hi, Daddy. I could almost respect a man who had the balls to confront me. Tell me you yeah. have. I'm paying your wife. Maybe this, this, this guy, maybe there's nothing he would rather do than, you know, to tell you that you're a lousy husband and that you don't deserve it. And maybe there's nothing he would rather do than to walk up in your face, look you right in the eye, and say to you, Chris, I'm banging your wife. Good. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe your wife owned that. Well, <laughs> I'd respect him at least. And if he did that, then I'd go up to him, look him in his eye, and I'd say, just come near her again, and I'll kill you. Oh, Chris, wow. <laughs> Talking to the wrong guy, Chris, because as a police officer, I can't let you go around threatening people's lives. I mean, if you're serious, then I would be obligated to do something about it. Really? That's right. Thanks for the beer and the conversation. Thanks for listening. Okay. You give him my best. If you can. <laughs> oh, great. That was great. Hmm. Why you didn't go home? I was waiting for you. Mm-hmm. Your mother's gonna be mad, you know. At me, too. So, what 
What you learn in school today? About the Ferdinands. Mm -hmm. The most poison snake in the world. If he bites you, that's all there is anymore. You go blind and die in 15 seconds. You know that snake come to be here? Huh? Well, way back in the old days, Plantation owners, they imported a snake to discourage the escape of slaves. That was us. Yes, that was us. But the snake don't know the difference between black and white. <laughs> you mean the snake start biting the white man too? Well, that's right. So you know what they did? No. They brought in the mongoose to kill off the snake. But you know what they forget? No. They forget that the mongoose is nocturnal. See, that means he likes the night. Whereas the snake, he likes the day. So while one was on his way to work, the other was on his way to bed. Now what you think of that? I guess that's the kind of place this is. Yes. What secret hath held you here that you followed not to Leonardo's? He is in love. With who? That is your grace's part. With Hero, Leonardo's short daughter. Amen if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troths, my lord, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But that I will hang my bugle in an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die, look pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. Well, as time shall try. In time the savage bull doth bear the yoke. The savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead. And let me be vilely painted, and in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire. Let them signify under my sign. Here you may see Benedict, the married man. Benedict, repair to Leonardo's. Tell him I will not fail him at supper, for indeed he hath made great preparation. Examine your conscience, and so I leave you. See you, Mr. Cabot. You have a Paul Cabot registered here? Cabot? Yeah. Someone was just pushed off the seventh floor balcony. How do you know he was pushed? Well, I don't know, but a man was seen trying to climb back into his room. All right, calm down, relax. Which side of the building was it on? On the side of the building was it on? That's the guy! That's him! That's Cabot! Wait up there, up 
children. Old Thunderstone said you were better than me, man. Well, I hope you're having a good time. Because you don't have much time left. I'm not dead yet. There's a man out there looking for you who wants you dead. Then I'm glad you got here first. <laughs> Playing's over. This is no time for games. Moby. Come on, Xavier! <laughs> Thunderstone was right. <laughs> I may sit in a corner and cry hey-ho for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. I'd rather have one of your father's getting. Hath your grace never a brother like you? Your father got excellent husbands if a maid could come by them. Will you have me, lady? No, my lord. Unless I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. But I beseech your grace, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me. And to be merry best becomes you, for out of question you were born in a merry hour. No. Sure, my lord. My mother cried. But then there was a star danced. And under that was I born. <laughs> Cousins. God give you joy. <laughs> By my troth, the pleasant-spirited lady. You get points today. Got yourself arrested for me, roughed up. Finally starting to act like a father, huh? Enough so I'll get off your back. I didn't want anything from you, Mr. Charlie. No adoption, no trust fund, nothing. I just came out here because Every kid wants to see what his dad is like. I didn't want you to like me because I was your son. I wanted you to respect me because I was mom's son. But I looked in your eyes and you didn't see mom. You saw black. And mom deserved better than that. You're older more than that. I looked at you in that big office and I kind of went crazy inside. I said to myself, this is the man who broke mama's heart. The man she spent her whole life loving and waiting for. And she died loving you, Mr. Charlie. I think you ought to know that. You walked away from a great lady. There's no woman in the world could love a man more than she loved you, Mr. Charlie. She'd have made you happy. <laughs> she knew how to make people happy. I wanted to hurt you like you hurt mom. I wanted to insult you so bad that you'd get angry and take a swing at me, then I'd have an excuse for punching you out. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? A son wanting to hit his own father. And I was glad when things went wrong for you. But then I realized no matter how much bad happened to you, that couldn't make any good happen to Mama. She's dead, Mr. Charlie. We'll never see her again hear her again, touch her again. She deserved a better life. You should have given her a better life. 
I should have given her a better life.